Hi everyone, welcome to basic science series. We are going to start a new lecture series on biochemistry. The first topic that I'm including is protein synthesis. Before we start to the lecture part, I want to tell you that which book I'm following for my notes. The book is Principles of Biochemistry written by David L. Nelson and Michael M. Cox. It's a fifth edition of the book. I do recommend that you read this book. This is a fantastic book on biochemistry. All right, let's start the topic. Let's talk about proteins. Proteins are macromolecules. They are the end product of most of the biological pathways. They are produced inside the cell by cellular machinery and they perform various function to keep the cell alive. For that, they must be synthesized as well as they must be degraded in a tightly regulated manner. To produce a polypeptide chain, we require 70 different ribosomal proteins. Additionally, we need 20 different enzymes just to activate amino acid precursors. We need approximately 100 enzymes just to process the protein after its manufacture. And we need additional 40 rRNAs and tRNAs molecules, total 300 molecules to make polypeptide chains. Nearly 90% of cell's chemical energy is required for protein synthesis. 1500 ribosomes molecules and 200,000 tRNA molecules in addition to 100,000 protein work together to form 35% of cell's dry mass in a typical E. coli cell. Inside an E. coli cell, protein molecules are synthesized constantly and at a very high speed. These molecules synthesize 100 amino acid long polypeptide in just 5 seconds. Therefore, the regulation of protein synthesis is very important. There are three major experimental evidences that were provided to understand the protein synthesis. First one is 1950s Paul Zemeck experiment, where he studied protein synthesis by using radio labeled amino acids. What he has done, he injected those amino acids inside an animal, a rat. After injection, what he has done is he took the liver of the animal out, he tested it for radio labeled amino acid, and what he has found is those amino acids were present in specialized area inside the cell. Immediately after the injection, minutes after the injection, and those areas were known as ribosomes. Here is a quiz question on this experiment. While liver was selected as the study organ in this experiment to study protein synthesis, why not brain, why not gut, why not heart? Why these organs were excluded? Why only the liver was selected? Please answer in comment section. Second major experimental evidence was provided by Mahi and Hogland and Zemek where they took the radio labeled amino acid and found that it binds to RNA molecule and gets activated. Later, this molecule was found as tRNA or transfer RNA. Third important contribution was provided by Francis Crick. He asked a question that how four letters of DNA can transfer the information in the form of 20 letters of proteins. How is that even possible? He suggested a model for that. He said that amino acids have the ability to bind to adapter molecule that further binds to DNA molecule to transfer the information in the form of protein. Later, this process was termed as translation. Let's summarize the presentation. We learned about the proteins, what are proteins and why they are so important, how they are synthesized inside the cell, what are the different uh, historical experiments that were performed to understand the protein synthesis. I hope you like the presentation. Please stay tuned for the uh, new videos that are going to come into this biochemistry series. Stay tuned. Please subscribe the channel. Thank you and Namaste.